Hey there YouTube, it's SGM436, time to review another dash cam. This time, it's a Wrestler branded one. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Anyway, let's get into it. Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another review video. This time, it's another dash cam. I love dash cams. Uh, anyway, I was contacted by the company and I think it's Wrestler. Not, not really sure how to pronounce that. But anyway, uh, they had a new model and this one actually has some upgraded features along with an upgraded price. So let's just get that out of the way. It's originally $169.99 and it's currently on sale for $150 I believe. So it's not a cheap camera. But if you look just at the spec sheet, uh, apparently it has a 4K sensor on the front facing camera and that'll do 170 degree field of view and the rear, there's also a rear camera is, uh, I believe it can do 2K at 140 degree. So should be pretty decent cameras. It's apparently a Sony sensor and uh, it has very low uh, like night vision capability and whatnot. And it's got all the bells and whistles. It's got Wi-Fi, it's got GPS, pretty much has everything except for the kitchen sink. And model number is CR612. And that's it. I mean, it's a nice box. They don't really go into too much detail on the box about what the product is. So hopefully they spent their money on what's inside the box. And just realizing now, oh, nope, I got it. I was gonna say I might have to actually stop and grab a knife, but nope. Really proud of their 4K Ultra HD driving recorder. <clears throat> okay, <laughs> I'm going to make a suggestion for them. Put like a little cutout, like a half circle cutout at the bottom so that you can kind of grab something. Because uh, the box is not wanting to open. Would make a better user experience. Anyway, it's a nice box, don't get me wrong. Uh, so yeah, it looks like we have the camera itself here very securely packed in like thick foam want to make sure that this arrives in one piece and we have a fun packet to the side oh looks like it just opens from the top there we go so yeah so we have our obligatory GPS module here and yeah, it's interesting. It actually only has three connections. So that's interesting. So how? Because normally the way that most of like these GPS modules work is I'll need at least four connections for power, ground, and then RX and TX for um, receive and transmit. wonder how they're only doing three. Obviously, there's going to be ground and Maybe it's a like bi-directional interface. It, maybe it doesn't use standard UART. That's actually interesting. Unfortunately, it looks like it is like fully sealed and potted. So I'm not gonna be able to crack this open without destroying it, it looks like. So yeah, there's that. We have the aforementioned rear camera with a mounting bracket. And yeah, this actually feels like it's pretty heavy. So yeah, really thick molding on it's not plastic. Yeah, it's actually... I wonder if there's like a metal frame inside. It feels kind of cold. So maybe it's metal and then over molded with some kind of plastic or tough rubber. But yeah. And there is a plastic uh, mounting frame on the bottom here and two screws at either side, Phillips screws. And yeah, that'll hold pretty nicely and a nice big thick cord. And it looks like they did their homework and they sealed... And every, every, oh, sorry about that. Looks like they, they did their homework and they sealed everything. Uh, so that if water gets in here, well, it won't get in here, hopefully. Uh, as long as they sealed it properly. Because this guy will actually sit, um, I believe it's meant to mount like somewhere around, maybe above or under your license plate. Uh, just so that it can actually view out the back there. And yeah, it has one of these interesting how many pins? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pin connectors. That's actually a lot of pins to 
shove into such a tiny well can't even focus on it to such a tiny plug <laughs> comes with uh, adhesive pad and some screws to mount it oh yeah let's just see how long the uh, the cord on the GPS is because yeah you're probably going to want to mount this somewhere on your windshield uh, kind of pointing upwards uh, to get like decent coverage but they give you plenty long enough cord that you can stick it kind of reasonable distance away from the camera yeah the cords like about six feet <laughs> so yeah they give you plenty of real estate to work with uh, we have a a power brick and yes I like to see this so oftentimes you only have one cigarette you know outlet in your car so when you stick this in it'll use up your only outlet so if you have other devices say you want to charge your phone or whatever you can't because it's consuming the only cigarette adapter this one will actually has a external USB plug so I can charge another device while this is plugged in that is fantastic really happy they went with that uh, we have I believe ah, interesting so this I guess goes into the GPS and that's what powers it and transmits the data and then it goes up through this uh, USB plug very interesting so Let's see how long this guy is. This guy looks really long. Maybe 10 or 11 feet. <laughs> so they give you plenty of cord. Good. And we have the main harness for our backup camera. And interestingly enough, this uses USB-C, even though uh, the power adapter itself is uh, Mini-B. That's interesting. And this is... I'm going to regret untangling this because this will get tangled and it's super long so but it's for science this is probably like 15 at least 15 feet long so they give you a ridiculous amount of cable so yeah if, if you are going to be installing this probably get one of those like velcro wire wrap tidy wire tidies and or you can i guess reuse the uh like the flexible uh wire tie that it came with and yeah, you're gonna wanna do some wire management in your car, otherwise you're gonna have wires going everywhere. We have a little foam. Oh no, these are, uh, they're like zip tie mounts for routing the cable. So they give you four of those. Um, okay, nice to have, I guess, if you wanna make sure that the wire like follows the contour of your uh, car frame instead of hanging down. And we have, last but not least, the uh, suction cup mount and it's one of these I, I like this style where you actually twist and it gives you like a, a definitive kind of lock so these hold up pretty well so yeah and it has uh, like a little keyed kind of lock thing there's a little detent in the plastic so it'll actually click in and it looks like this will rotate side to side and then there's also a thumb lock and this will do up and down as well so there's kind of two two uh axes of orientation there so that's cool and oh yeah a uh, little pry tool if you wanted to hide the wires inside your trim you can do that and we have a user manual it has different icons um, they show you what each of the buttons do uh how to install it etc etc qr code for the app yeah, it's pretty in depth and that's cool apparently the software will actually show you in kind of real time where certain scenes in the video file are located physically that's really cool and that's for yeah windows or mac it's a gps player that's that's actually interesting that i might download to play around with uh yeah and okay we actually know the uh the exact Wow, they give you a lot of specifications here. So we know the exact sensor, the IMX335, and for both the front and the back. And uh, the processor is a Novatech 96670. That's interesting. I have to look up the data sheet for that. 
It records in H.265, so it's more efficient. Oh yeah, by the way, I think I forgot to mention, this will actually take a 256 gig uh, micro SD card. And I kind of have no doubt it'll take actually larger cards than that, but that's what they tested it for. So yeah, it has built-in mic, yada, 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 HDR, WDR, etc., etc. 300 milliamp hour battery, but you'll be leaving it plugged in. And working temperature is up to one, about 160 uh, Fahrenheit, so yeah, your car is going to get cooking, so definitely has to survive that. Anyway, let's look at the camera itself. So just dump this out, and it's an interesting shape, I'll tell you that. It's a uh, one of these like fixed lens and fisheye, and I believe that's the mic. Either the mic or the speaker, because usually these will have a speaker as well, so when you're playing back. Uh, the mic is either located on the bottom or the front, and the speaker vice versa. But yeah, we have four buttons on the bottom. We have that key mount that goes in here, which just slots in like this. I'm not going to do that now because they're kind of a pain to get out uh, when they're fresh. We have the Type-C for the uh, the rear camera. I, I almost wonder, are they using, like, is it actual USB that they're transmitting the data over, or are they just using the physical connector, in which case never plug an actual Type-C into here, it could fry something, or vice versa. So, yeah, I'm almost wondering, are they actually transmitting the, the, um, the signal over, like, USB, or are they just reusing this connector and allocating the pins differently? That's interesting. Anyway, we have the Mini-B up here. Lots of ventilation, too, so that's good. Uh, we have the trans flash slot, so your micro SD card goes in here. Oh, here's the mic hole. So I guess these are just ventilation and or speaker, maybe. But yeah, that's interesting. The mic is on the side. Power button, and then nothing here. It looks like there should be a label here, but there's nothing. So yeah, let's see if it has power. Blue light came on. Oh, nope, you have to press and hold. So there you go. Yeah, and it's saying it can't, there's no Wi Fi connection and parking mode is disabled, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And yeah, it has one of these simple graphical user interfaces that, so because you can't tell what, when it's mounted upright, it's kind of hard to see what the buttons are saying. So it uses little graphical context things to show you what each button will do. So that's cool. So yeah, um, I'm actually going to about two thirds charge. So that's a that's a good sign. They know. Um, usually, when you ship a battery, you store it for a long time. You should really only charge to about eighty percent uh, to prevent like the battery depleting very quickly. But yeah. Anyway, I'm going to install this in my car and drive around for about a week or two, and um, show you what my findings are. So I'll see you then.
Okay, so it's been about two and a half weeks-ish for me. And so the footage that I, I showed you guys, it came out okay. Um, there is a bit of a concern in terms of uh, I only had on hand to test a 32 gig there you go, Micro Center branded 32 gig micro SD card, and that filled up fast because you only have two options in the menu for this. You can record in 4K or 2K, and that's it. No 1080p, and there might be some uh, difference in terms of like the actual sharpness or the quality of the, the footage. But personally, for like my everyday camera, I usually just record at 1080p, and it's good enough. If, if you're going to get in an accident, you don't necessarily need to see, you know, three miles down the road. It's going to be like right in front of you or right behind you or to the side, something like that. So in in that case, I prefer using these cheap 32 gig cards and just, you know, having 1080p, 30 or 60, whatever. Uh, and that's good enough for my case. But even at the, the 4K, um, it, it was like quite a bit for like five minutes of footage. It was like hundreds of megabytes i think like possibly even like upwards of a gigabyte uh some of the file sizes were the 2k is a bit more manageable and the video quality difference i didn't really see too much of a difference between the two maybe uh looking at the file sizes they've reported as you know the correct um actual resolutions but it's really hard to tell with a lot of these i'll use some um like different types of compression or they might use uh, integer scaling to scale up the image in which case you're not going to get the actual full reported resolution so it's really hard to tell and i don't really have the software uh in order to discern the difference all i know is it looked decent enough i would have preferred an additional 1080p mode though if they could have just added that just so that you could, you know, if you don't want to buy a massive memory card, even if you were to stick, you know, a 128, 256 in here, over the course of like a couple of weeks, it's going to fill up anyway and you're going to have to keep emptying it out. So might as well just have like a budget 1080p mode. I think that would be easy enough to add to the software and it would save your memory card from overwriting, you know, ridiculously fast. Another thing so the actual performance i was lucky enough that we had some weather variation during like the two weeks that i actually drove around with this uh it was mostly sunny and like super hot but there was like one or two days of of uh, rainfall so we got some overcast shots in that now unfortunately because it's the summer when i'm driving home if this review were during the winter i would have some night shots i don't drive around at night randomly so i only have kind of overcast and super sunny one thing that did kind of uh, annoy me, if I'm being honest, was this spaghetti mess. So, I get the point. I get why they do it this way. It's just not the best way. Uh, setting up between this and the, the antenna for the GPS and then the re rear wire bundle for, like, the rear camera, uh, that's a bit of a nightmare. And they put this separator, so... This actually goes into the camera. It's a uh, mini USB, which is meh. Uh, I would have preferred USB-C, but I'm okay with mini, fine, whatever. But this split off that goes to the GPS module is like at the worst possible location. It's like not even a foot away from the plug. So when you plug this into the camera, this invariably hangs like right in the middle of you on your dashboard, like right in front of you. And there's really no way around that. You would need to extend this cord to, to be longer. I really wish, honestly, if you're going to do this, just have one wire go up to the camera itself and then put any plugs in the AC adapter. So you would have, you know, this right here next to the, you know, like molded into that. And so you only have one wire and everything plugs in kind of below line of sight. Because as it is right now, this is really distracting when you're driving and it, it, it blocked like the AC controls and like it, it was like really annoying, like having multiple wires coming down. I'm sure if I spent the time to actually like open the paneling in my car and like hiding the wires and like using the, uh, the wire mount zip tie thingies that it came with, I could make it look nicer. That's a lot of effort just for a brand new dash cam when I just... Whenever I upgrade a dash cam, I just want to take the old one out, put the new one in, and that's it. And it should be that easy. And you just have so much wire to deal with. I get why it's this way. 
it would be a lot harder to make an AC adapter that has everything included in there and just have like one thicker wire going up, uh, sending everything to the camera. But it, it's just, it was kind of a hassle, honestly, and it was distracting while I was driving, having this big squid thing floating around. <laughs> so yeah, not not too happy with that. Now, if, if you were to uh, not use a GPS and you were to not use a backup camera, then all you would need is just a regular uh, mini USB cable, and that would power the uh, camera right in there, and that would give you a lot cleaner of like a wiring bundle. But then... By that point, I'm asking myself, well, who is this camera for? If you're spending about 130, I think it was, bucks on a dash cam, it's because you wanted those extra features, because you wanted GPS, because you wanted, you know, the uh, the backup camera and whatever. So if you're going through all that trouble to spend the extra money for those features and then not using it just because the wiring is a, honestly, is an absolute mess in your car, uh yeah that sort of doesn't make any sense so i think in the future if they wanted to make this a little bit easier i think the right way to go about this is on a previous um dash cam that i reviewed the base had the gps built into it and it had uh, contacts going to the main unit so it just clipped on uh, and it suctioned to your window so everything was contained and there's really only one wire going out uh, which was power i think that would be a better way of doing this even if maybe, okay, fine, I guess you can't really get rid of the video, the backup video feed. Uh, but at least if you could consolidate, you know, one of the wires or something, that would make this, I think, a lot more manageable trying to fit this in your car and get it to look nice and, you know, not not obstruct your view in any way or anything like that. So, yeah, in terms of the actual usability, I had pretty much no issue. It um, You just plug it in, <laughs> and it starts record recording once you start up your car. Uh, I really liked about this unit is on the screen, when it shuts off, most of them will shut off the screen to like save power while you're driving. I really like this unit it has a clock, like a date and clock calendar that comes up on the screen like a screensaver, and that's actually really cool. If you're going to have a screen and you don't want to show the live video feed the whole time, then you might as well show the time on it. I mean, this was like just like a second clock then. I like that, um, which was a little bit easier than looking down at my stereo uh, to see the time while I was driving to see if I was going to be late or not. But anyway, yeah, uh, overall, pretty happy with like the video quality. Audio quality was mediocre, I'll be honest. Uh, the mic, I believe, is like hidden in the front here, or maybe on the side there's like a hole. Uh, it seemed to be pretty muffled, very much so muffled. And so I, I think if you if you wanted your dash cam to record audio you know, super clearly, if you wanted to, I don't know, use it for evidence or something, if you get in an accident, uh, the mic on this isn't going to cut it. You can use this for video, sure, that's great. Uh, you would want to record on a different audio source if you wanted audio for some reason uh, to include with the video. I really did like also that the uh, the mounting system is the exact same mounting system. There must be like a standard or something, I don't know, uh, as my old one, which was a, what was it called, an Ape Tech or something like that. And it just uses a slide keying system, so it's really easy to remove this, and once you click it in place and insert it, it, it it's not going to fall off on its own, but it's easily removable. And I really like that because that meant that I could reuse the old mount, which the old mount has a suction cup on it, much like the one that this came with. And suction cups always work great for like the first year, and then I have bad luck with them. They always fail like after about a year of use. I guess because of the heat in the car and like the, the rubber maybe chemically changes or something. So what I ended up doing was 3D printing a mount on my old one that just replaced the suction cup with like a hard flat piece of plastic. And then I used a uh, very similar tape to this, um, which is like the 3M VHB tape. And I permanently have that stuck on my, my windshield. So I'm very happy that this came with the standardized mount that I could reuse that base because I do not want to have to pull that off. Uh, it will be very difficult, and I'd probably end up scratching my window. But yeah, uh, the fact that it is standardized, um, I think that's something that all uh, manufacturers should, you know, pick a standard like this, a locking mechanism, so 
you basically keep your suction mount and you just you know upgrade your your dash cam itself whenever you need to i think that's that's really nice and this guy's just gonna keep turning on while i'm waving it around <laughs> anyway yeah uh huge thanks to wrestler for sending this guy in for review yeah if you guys have any specific questions about features or whatever i know i, I kind of glossed over a lot of it because a lot of these dash cams have very similar features because I'm pretty sure they're based off of very similar software. Uh, but if you have anything specific, I'd be happy to help you guys um, and maybe post like a follow-up quick video or something like that. But if you guys are interested, I will have links um, to the, the product sales page with more information. Yeah, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.